can assure you that what you will observe is a vast wasteland. Is a trying channel it's a mental condition of the need to drive or the thing to control and argue about that thing to control. Free and uncorrupted communication. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm Henry Yang, the Chancellor of University of California, Santa Barbara. Our university is tremendously honored to welcome Dr. Carlos Matteo Bamelli as our prestigious Regents Lecturer. Dr. Bamelli is the President of the National Senate of Paraguay. He is a powerful voice for democracy in Latin America. He will be talking to us today about the process of transforming authoritarian societies into democratic ones. He has been one of the leaders of just such a transformation in Paraguay. His message has great relevance for everyone in our global society. Each time I have spoken with Dr. Bamelli, I have been so impressed by his deep devotion to his country and its people. His achievements are the result of his passionate commitment to democracy, not just the ideals of democracy, but a democracy in action, democracy realized. We appreciate the time that Dr. Bamelli has spent this week with our students. I understand that he has had some inspiring discussions with our students about Latin American history, politics, and the relationship between the United States and Latin America. We have all been looking forward to today's lecture. I would like to thank everyone who helped make this possible, including Arts and Lectures Manager Roman Baradiak, Professor Brad Schmelke, and Professor Fernando Lopez Alves. I want to thank our colleagues in political science for hosting Dr. Bamelli. Thanks especially to our chair, Professor Peter de Gasser. And most of all, I want to say thank you to Dr. Carlos Matteo Bamelli. We welcome you as our distinguished Regents Lecturer. Thank you. Um, thanks for um, coming. We are very pleased um, to have such a large and eager to hear audience. Uh, this afternoon is hot. Beach is tempting. Thank you for being here. Uh, we are here to, uh, today for a talk given by our Regents Lecturer in Political Science, Dr. Carlos Mateo Valmeli, who is sitting right there now drinking some water, not drinking, but uh, pouring some water. And um, we are honored to have finally a politician among us in the Political Science Department. We usually have people that talk about politics or know about politics, study politics, uh, enjoy reading about politics, but we very few times have politicians. And um, we have today in the world, I would say, a world full of democracies. We got democracies all over the place. Um, we were wishing to have a lot, now we have a lot, and we don't know how to study or how to understand them. Uh, we have some democracies that are limping. I call them limping democracies. They are walking in the right direction, but they can stand really firmly in two legs. There are other democracies that are dysfunctional democracies. They come from dysfunctional families, and therefore they are dysfunctional themselves. Uh, they come from a background of dictatorship or authoritarianism, and therefore these democracies are also problematic. We have emerging democracy, we have all democracies, we have middle-aged democracy, we have all the different democracies that you like to have, and Latin America especially has all of them. Latin America, in that sense, is a great laboratory for this thing called democracy. To be in Latin America in this particular moment in time is difficult, but I think to be a politician is even more difficult. Um, if you are a politician in one of these democracies, probably you are blamed for everything under the sun. Probably you are kind of the lowest species in the human race. 
At the same time, you're asked to resolve every single problem there is, and you are pressured to give a solution to things that no one has been able to resolve before. So it's not an easy job. Uh, today, we are honored to have someone who has done a brilliant career in a breathtaking, I would say, rapid uh, span of time. Um, he has gone from militant youth in his native country, Paraguay, to become, uh, a few years ago, the head, the president of the Senate of the Paraguayan Republic. He has also uh, indicated to me that he's proud to be a politician and that should today be sure to introduce him as such, so I'm doing that. But uh, Carlos Mateo Balbieli is also more than a politician. He is also a lawyer, and he also has a PhD from a German uh, university. He has written several books on Latin America. I learned a lot for all these books, and therefore is a weird and a strange but welcoming combination of a politician and a scholar. Um, I need to say, uh, the last thing I need to say is that uh, Carlos now is this uh, wonderful president of the Senate of Paraguay, and the next step from that will be the presidency of the country, and I hope that he runs, and I hope that we can have probably a region lecturer at some point in time that we can call the president of this new emerging democracy. With my honor, Carlos, por favor. Okay, first of all, I want to say thank you very much for the Santa Barbara University to invite me to be here. For me, it's really an honor and a very good experience to be here to exchange opinion and experience with a scholar like Fernando Lopez. Uh, he's well known in Latin America. I told him, I know you, before I know you, I met your books, and that is something important. That is true, really. And with Karen, with all the people that were with me today and yesterday, working, talking, students, yeah. And with my Brad, my friend Brad Chemelska, that I know him since we were together in Germany. And really, I am very happy, glad to be here, Lawrence. That's made possible everything for me. I don't know where it's uh, Florence Sanchez, yeah. Um, Really, it's a pleasure and honor. Um, I want to talk about the failures of politics in democracy in Latin America. I want to explain that my speech will have four parts. First of all, I want to speak about what kind of approach we need to analyze, to understand politics and democracy in Latin America, the first part. The second part, I will talk about the requirements that are lacking to establish a stable democracy in Latin America. In the third part, I will speak about the contradiction that provoke unstable democracy in Latin America. And the fourth and the last part will be I will try to elaborate, to offer you an agenda to strengthen democracy and to improve the quality of the politics in Latin America. First of all, why I call this lecture the failure of the politics in democracy in Latin America, challenger for the democratization process. Why? Because Three months ago, I was in Mexico with scholars, former presidents from many countries of Latin America, former president from Spain, Felipe Gonzalez, and the people were talking about the crisis of democracy in Latin America. And thank heavens, I am a politician, and I am involved, I am engaged in the politics 
in Latin America. And I know the problem is not the democracy in Latin America. Of course, I agree. Democracy doesn't work very well. But why? Because the policy, the politic fell. The failure is the politic. The politician and their society, we have the responsibility. To us belong the responsibility why democracy is not working well in Latin America. That is why I want that I will try that you focus your attention not in democracy, please in the politics, the way how the people are engaged politics in Latin America. Why I want to emphasize with this approach, why I want to repeat and to say, please thinking about politics as autonomous phenomenon. Why? Because long time in Latin America, and people that study Latin America, and today one student here, one from Spain, I saw him now, I am seeing him, he told me many times observers, people that make analysis, people that advise Latin America government and politicians, they see Latin America but not in the real and the right way. They see and they advise many times in the wrong way politics that must to be implemented in Latin America. And long time ago, after the Second World War, a lot of scholars, a few scholars believe democracy won't work in Latin America until Latin American country don't reach the level, some kind of level from modernization, the modernization theory. And after the modernization theory in the 16, 17, we have a dependency theory. That dependency theory said that democracy won't work in Latin America because this country are dependent on world market. And today, the society in Latin America, we are not a modern society. And we are a modern and part of traditional society. We're still a tradition society in many areas in Latin America. And we are involved in the world market. Now we have open market. Now we are more dependent on the world system than 20 years ago. But we have democracy. Maybe we don't have democracy that work very well. But we have democracy. Since 79, the transition has been gone in Latin America. And we are keeping democracy in Latin America with many obstacles, with many economic problems, with more social problems, with more penetration for international force. And we have democracy. Why? Because I think we have to analyze politic and institutional arrangement as independent variable. Long time in Latin America, the left people and the right people, they are together in this point of view. They analyze politics and democracy in Latin America as dependent variable, dependent on economic, dependent on class struggle, dependent on dependency dependent on world markets. And that's what I think does give no other explanation, but does give the justification in many cases. And today, I think we have, and that is the part first for my speech, we have to focus our attention in the politic as independent variable. That's it for me, very important, because that means that we have, when we are looking for the reason why fell democracy in Latin America, why democracy doesn't work very well, why democracy is not able to pro provide security, why democracy is not able 
able to provide job, social security. We have to look for this reason in the politic. It doesn't mean that we have not to consider social economic problem. Of course we have to do that, but please think does the politic in Latin America, the value of the politics we have to recognize in Latin America. And if we improve the politics in Latin America, we will find the solution to overcome many social economic problems that we have today. Okay. The second part is the requirement, requirement that are lacking to establish a stable democracy in Latin America. The first problem that I believe that we have in Latin America is their, their way how we are making institutions in Latin America. Transition has begun since 30 years, more or less, 25, 26 years with Ecuador, 79, has begun transition. We reach democracy in Latin America. And we start to make every kind of new institution. We change constitution. The first point in every agenda in the transition process in every country was new constitution. And we make in every country from Latin America new constitution. In many countries of, of Latin America, we have seen then two constitutions. Ecuador made two constitutions. Peru made two constitutions. Paraguay will make a new constitution. Bolivia made two constitutions. One constitution and after the reform from, from this constitution. It means we believe in Latin America that if we make formal institution, we will consolidate democracy in Latin America. Um, they are one country that's never changed constitution in Latin America, in South America. One country, only one. Chile. Chile keep the constitution from Pinochet. Maybe the Chilean people don't want to listen to that, but it's true. They keep this constitution. Okay. And Chile have, maybe today, the democracy in Chile and the economic situation in Chile, the social situation in Chile are improving in compared with other countries in Latin America. But what is the problem to make institution, formal institution? The way how we make, the kind for institution that we make. And the problem in Latin America, and that is something important, and I can tell you this because I have my own experience, because I was member in the constitution in Paraguay, 92. I have my personal experience now. I am a member of the parliament. I make law, and through the law, we make institution. And what is the problem? That in Latin America, we have the gap between the formal institution and the reality. We make institutions that are not according to the reality. They are not according to the possibility, the reality offer us. And we have the gap is every day wider. And we have to make this gap narrow. We have to make every time smaller the gap between institutional, formal institutional, and the reality. That is a problem that I believe we inherit from the Spanish time. We have the, the, the point of view, the Latin American politician, that's to make institutions that many times are in contradiction with the reality. Many times we invoke the truth and we deny the reality. When we make institutions or when we make constitution, we try to make true, to realize, to materialize the truth, the utopia. And I think to make institution, we have to create institution with common sense. And we have lack of common sense to create institution. And it's easy to explain that. Why, since 25 year democratization process in Latin America, you can see that is permanent. 
we change, we alter our legal framework. We alter our constitution system in Latin America. And you cannot imagine that means waste of time, waste of energy, effort. You have to reach agreement, in, and we are not working to solve the real problem. We have to reshape the institution that's not work because this institution is not according to the reality. We adopt many institutions that people, foreign people, Americans, Europeans, that get salary from here, go there, advise us, and we have to adopt, but we don't adapt the institution for the reality. And that is really have to do with the points of view, what Douglas North called the path of dependency for every society. That has to do with the expectation which values people, upper class, low class, civil society, politicians share together. That is really a problem related with cultural values. That is not easy to change. That is why I say, okay, if you expect, because I will advise to the end that we have to implement in Latin America institutional development, but to do that, we have to understand that institutional development never is rapid, slowly. You have to increase slowly. You cannot make that really we, uh, fast. You have to consolidate every step that you are working in this process. That's why I think, first of all, that we have to recognize in Latin America, what fell in Latin America is the lack of rational path of dependency to create institutions, to overcome the gap between formal and informal institutions, between constitution and reality. We try through the legal, through the law, we try to change reality. And what we have to do is what realists must turn legal is in opposite. That is a big contradiction in every, in every country from Latin America. Because uh, normally people hire me to go and to advise many countries. We have to change the institution that we create five, six, eight years before. And that's cause time, that's cause opportunity, that's uh, erode the leadership because we are making wrong decision how to create our institutional arrangement. And please, this problem is really a structural problem. It's not new. Octavio Paz, and I will repeat his sentence, Octavio Paz would say, we adopt institution from Europe and United States, but we don't adapt institution to reality. And please, that is a real problem. And really, sometimes, I afraid, when the Americans and the Europeans go there to make from the right side the free market that you don't have in America, and the left to, ha to do or to make the revolution that not where you have. That's happened in Latin America, the laboratory for many people. What is what we need in Latin America? Another problem that we have, lack of human capital. Lack of human capital in the ruling class. That is something that you can see in Latin America. Um, please, I don't want, maybe, you see, uh, you believe, okay, this guy is a little arrogant. <laughs> He's talking about the lack of human capital. Human capital is the concept is related that's with the skill, capacity from the people. And I complain, again, the degradation of political ruling class in Latin America. I think I remember I was talking one day with President Alfonsin and President Julio Maria Sanguinetti for Uruguay, and I told them, I remember, I was very young when I started to fight against the dictatorship in my country, and I told them, I remember when we fought against the dictatorship, their politician 
were better. The quality from the people were better. That is something that we can observe in every country in Latin America. How goes, no slowly, fast, rapid, the degradation of the ruling class. I don't know if it has to do with the electoral system, electoral system that doesn't allow, allow to select, to elect, to choose the best people. But that's in something that's happened in every country in Latin America. And please, I don't want to look as uh, the arrogant guy that came here to America, Santa Barbara, to say, I am clever and the rest are stupid. Please, because it's, uh, uh, it's, I am talking about the people that they are working with me. <laughs> that is something that I want. Please understand me what I want to say. You can observe in Latin America the level, how go down from the politician. How the politician are able to get the job, to get the power, but not to solve the problem. And they believe politics mean the struggle for power, the fight for power, get the power. And what I do with the power? They forget. That's happened. And the problem is now, now, the society start to take revenge. But I don't know if the society punish in the best way. So that is something that's because we have society that sometimes they cannot make the difference between the good and the bad politician. But that is something that we have to improve to have a stable democracy in Latin America. There we have to, to have, again, human capital in the ruling classes. The third, lack of social capital. That is a problem that we have in Latin America, the lack of social capital. Maybe why? There are many explanations to explain why the lack of social capital. Lack, lack of social capital means that no trust among the member of the ruling class and society. No trust between government and the people. That is, that's maybe why, because people are in necessities. Be, because maybe long dictatorship. Be, maybe because many, many problems. Maybe because have to do with the way how we think. We are very selfish. And we are not so rational to understand that together we can be better. I remember that when I was young, I wrote the book from Alexis Tocqueville. And he noticed in Democracy of America that he saw at the time a very good thing for the American society. And he called that the art of the association. The art of the association. American people, for American people, it's easy to go together. For American people, it's easy to work together. They are choosing who will be the sheriff. They don't have authority. They choose. They go together to follow a, a bandit. They, 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 for the judicial system, they organize something. But that is something that we, we need us in Latin America. The art of association. We don't have what people call here the, the um, social scientific, no logic for collective action. For example, the party system in Latin America are in crisis. It's almost impossible to work together in the parties. What do we have in Latin America? Free riders. People want to share the benefits but they don't want to share the cost. And go and tell me in which country in Latin America you don't have problem in the political party system. Let me know one, maybe Chile, with problem. But in Argentina, destroy. The Peronist party split up. The radical party split up. In Brazil, the party are weak. In Bolivia, almost disappear. Now the uh, Indios movement. In Ecuador, India's movement. In Peru, who knows? 
in Colombia, Alvaro Uribe, he was liberal, now he's independent. Chavez is outsider. He doesn't belong to any party. And that is the real problem in Latin America. We don't, we don't have the capacity to develop our own luggage to collective action. And you need to work together in parties, in union. How you will create civil society if you, you cannot work together. I remember when the transition had begun, many people invoke civil society. But they invoke civil society again, free market. They invoke, invoke the concept civil society again, governments, again, authoritarian rulers. But what is now the civil society in Latin America? We have NGOs that work because they get the money from outside. That is why, the only reason. But we have really a lot of problem to get what I call the logic from collective action. And we have in every association, party, union, civil society, free riders. Lack of a governance. That is the main problem that we have in Latin America. Lack of government or governance. That is why I told you when I start to talk today, please, we have to analyze politics as independent variable. If we analyze politics as independent variable, we will understand how important is governance for democracy. That's democracy to work need governance. And governance is a word that American called us catch all. The people, for the people, for the common people, or for the politician, or for the civil society, governance, catch all, have a lot of meaning. I will only use in three meaning. First of all, where we need governance. We need governance as process to increase the capacity of the government. That is something important. We need governance to increase the process, the capacity of the government. That means we need more government in Paraguay. In Latin America, we'll talk the next part about that. Governance as process to create institution. Why governments are Governance are process to create institution. Because the institution don't go alone from society. The institution were created through the politics, the law, the constitution, the institutional arrangement. That is why we have to have governance that create institution and are sensitive to create institution in the right way does institution work according to reality. We need this kind of governance in Latin America. Governance to create institution because the institution never come alone. You have to create the political will, the political power. You need political support to create and to establish institution, institution, not only in Latin America, in America too. That is important that the, the governance, the politician, and the society, the society have to demand, the politician have to supply governance, but governance sensitive for the creation of institution. It's very important. And the governance, another meaning that I use for this word, the governance as process to reach agreement that's work among political actors. That is something that we need in Latin America. Reach agreement does work among political actors. Because we reach agreement, but they don't work because we don't respect the agreement that we reach. And that belongs to our mentality. Don't worry about it. We deal. We reach the deal. We agree, but we forget to sign and to keep the politics for 10 years if you want to make state reform, 
you won't do one term. Maybe you need 10 years, 20 years. You need, you need agreement, long term. For foreign politics, you need agreement, long term. To encourage the challenge for globalization, you need politics for long term, thinking in long term. To make market reform in your country, social pension system reform, you need long term. You have to have the inclination, the will to get engaged in agreement that you wish respect 10 years after. That's no, we don't respect that. That is why we don't have problem to enchain constitution, law system, uh, electoral system, party system every five, 10 years. That is something that I think we have to reach in Latin America. The contradiction does provoke unstable democracy in Latin America. First of all, we have a big contradiction between democracy and democracy versus electoral democracy. What happened? We have election. In the last time, people don't complain. Again, who won? The loser, the winner. We agree. We have transparent electoral process. No one say, okay, she make a trick. No, okay. Won't Chavez in Venezuela, he's not able to govern. Fujimori, Toledo in Peru, he cannot keep the power. Um, Sanchez Loza in Bolivia. Fernando de la Rua in Argentina. Color de Melo in Brazil. Ecuador changed three, three presidents. Paraguay won, Cuba. You win, but you are not able to create a large new majority to support your government, to create the condition to facilitate the governance. They are a big democracy versus electoral democracy. And please, I want to point out something. 20 years ago, the army intervened and threw out the government, take over. Coup d'etat. But today, are the people in the street that throw out the government, the politician, the president. It's not the military intervention. That's in something that's changed. That's, in, that's in something that we have to think. It's not only to win the election. How I keep the power. How I can guarantee the governance in this country. It's not easy how I can perform few politics to improve the life standard from the people. It's, it's not easy to do that now in Latin America. And we have all countries, people that get the power, president that get the power, but he is not able to create a new large majority to facilitate the governance in the country. In every country, parliament block the president. That is a contradiction that we have to overcome. The second contradiction, the political process versus the possibility to create power. The political process erodes, may weak the power structure in Latin America. And that is something that we have to think about. We have to increase their capacity from the government to enforce the law, to implement politics. I won't say like John Lennon, power to the people. We need power, we, we need to empower the politician. We need to empower the government. We need to empower the rulers today in Latin America. We are weak to guarantee governance in Latin America. They are a opposition between the political process and their possibility to create power. I remember late 80s, early 90s, when people thinking about governance, 
People are afraid, worried about to go back to authoritarian rulers. People believe that the, the authoritarian, the authoritarianism, the Leviathan threat democracy in Latin America. Today the problem is not go back to the authoritarian time. The problem is the anarchy. Who has the power? Who has the power in Latin America? It's different. Not the army intervene to throw out the government. The people, the middle class in the street. It's not the less campesino movement. Are the people in the street? Stop. And we have another problem. A stable macroeconomic versus more social poverty and more um, development, underdevelopment. Another contradiction that we have. What do we have to do in order to make the economy work better? What we have to do? What do we have to do after the Washington Consensus? What now? I think we have to solve the problem looking for solution in market. To, the problem is not the site from the government. The, for, the problem is we have to increase the administrative capacity for the government to perform politics. That is my personal opinion. People think after the liberalism, neoliberalism, what we have to do in Latin America, I think we never have new liberalism in Latin America. I am sure. I don't know how, time, how many time I have. Uh, well, you don't have more, but... <laughs> OK. Maybe I, I, may f uh, I summarize my last part. is the agenda that I think we have to have to improve, to establish or, uh, an agenda to strengthen democracy and to improve the quality of politics in Latin America. I will, make, I will summarize and will let open the time to question. First of all, emphasize the need for institutional development. We have to insist to emphasize we need institutional development. If we understand that, we have to understand that it's not rapid. Take time to institutional development. And we have to make the institutional development in the rational way. That means institutions have to work. And not like now, that every five, ten years, we have to, to change, to alter the institution that we put, made working ten years ago. Second, empower the state. We need to stay in Latin America. We need to stay. Not like that, in the current, fashion, but we need a state. I disagree with the people that believe their government or their state very big in Latin America. It doesn't work. It's, it's, we need a state in Latin America. We need more government. And doesn't mean we need more state in detrimental of the civil society or in detrimental of the market. We need a state to make market work to make society, to guarantee the rules, the right from the society, the rule of law. We need that. Third, we need to consolidate the independent judicial system. It's very important. We cannot have a strategy to develop institutions without to have independent judicial system. And that means that Supreme Court must not be more tool for the politician. Independent, independent judicial system. Fourth, we have to improve the quality of the ruling class. We have to improve the quality from the ruling class, and we have to guarantee that in the ruling, can, in the ruling, ruling class, people have to change. You, don't, you cannot have one ruling class for 40 years, 30 years. You have to change. You have to change ruling class. That is a problem in Latin America. We stay longer in their position. You have to change ruling class. You have to create the condition for the emergency of new leadership that are engaged with values 
of institutional development. We need leaders. Leadership is necessary. Change to alter social situation never come alone. The Marxist beliefs, the social struggle to alter the order in the society. I, I disagree with this. Leadership, decision, makers, politicians change the society. Never the, never the order in the society alter because they have inherited force. You need, if it's necessary to change, you have to force the change in society. Never come along the change in society for a struggle, a social class struggle, or whatever you want. You have to change with leadership, and we need leadership in Latin America. We have to strengthen the party system. Are weak the party system in Latin America? In many countries, disappear. No place in the world work democracy without party system. We need party system. We have party system. We need to develop the logic for collective action in the party system. We have to redefine or market the boundaries between society and state, government and civil society. Not as antagonism, but we have to think about what the government and the state have to do and what have to do the civil society in the market. We have to redefine that. And we have to think local. What does that mean? First of all, we have the global problem. And globalization belongs to reality. I cannot be again or for that. Belong to reality. We have to do everything thinking that we have to be within the global world independent. And not independent of the global world. We have to be there. Solution, problem, and decision that we have to make, we have to think global. Because we cannot be alone or isolated in the global world system. OK, thank you very much for your attention. Can you suggest any historical factors responsible for the lack of strong institutions in South America? I guess he, the they question are, goes to what you talk about colonialism and things yeah, like this. We, there are two questions about this, pretty much the same. Yeah, I think uh, uh, we have uh, uh, many reasons, but uh, I think uh, the main reason is why we don't develop fast I think it's not because we are independent, because we are not able to make the right politic. We are not able or clever enough or generous enough to make what the country, what should be done, we are not able to do. What should be done, does. we have to have the courage to do that. A uh, question about Chile. What is the secret? Mm -hmm. What has Chile uh, made of uh, democracy that other countries cannot make of it? I mean, what did Chile succeed? What other countries fail in doing so? It's a good question. I, uh, I, I studied part of my doctor degree that I make in Germany was about the Chile transition. Um, in Chile, in Chile, Something that I mentioned here happened. What, for example? The people are, the politicians in Chile are able to reach agreement and to respect us. Uh, they respect Pinochet. Of course, the human rights group, I mean, still, the people complained, they were loud again, but they respect. Pinochet was the chief command from the army under. Patricia Orwin. Uh, they respect the Constitution. And the transition was not uh, radical. They make the transition within their Constitution, Pinochet Constitution. And still now, they don't change the, the Pinochet Constitution. 
they reach macroeconomic stability. All win, not change the politic from Pinochet. Of course, they emphasize more in social areas because trickle down the other, the macroeconomic, and trickle down and they open the hand. But if you, of course, maybe people from Chile, my friend, that are people that are working for democracy in Chile, they, they don't want to listen what I say. <laughs> but in Chile, uh, the, the path of dependency, the model, they don't change from dictatorship to democracy. A hard one now. Uh, how can you empower politicians when they already abuse their power? First of all, and today I say this to the people, power is not an instrument. I have the power that the power, my power lives in the imagination of the people. Politicians lost credibility in Latin America. That is the problem. And to empower politicians is not to give them more weapons. People have to believe in what we are doing. That is the, the real problem that we have. People mistrust politicians. We have to get again. Uh, the confidence of the people. And maybe we have to say something here. The medium, the medium uh, play a role to, uh, in, in the politics in Latin America. The medium played a role, and we have one day maybe to talk more about the, what kind of role play the medium in Latin America. Maybe two in America, yeah, all over. Uh, with the weakness of the politics, is Latin America ready to give more power to the state, which is what you suggest? Mm. I think uh, uh, if the, govern the government uh, don't have more power, how you will implement politics that you need? Uh, we need change in Latin America in many areas. And without having power, authority, we don't do that. Of course, rules of law, but power, order, we need that. Well, um, there's a question that, it's a long question, but let me phrase it in a very short way. Um, what needs to be done to close the gap between the formal constitution and reality? Hmm. I think, first of all, we have to when we make constitution or law, we have, because we are making law. And the people that make law are very generous. We say, yes, do you want us? We do this, if you want. And I think we have to be, to be more rational. And we have to know, it will work or no? It's according to the possibility that rea reality offer for us or no? It is not, don't do that. People know that. I remember West, when we were making the constitution in Paraguay, I was in Germany, I finished my, my studies there, and I was finished and I went to Paraguay, and the day after I start to be a member of the constitution, I don't have a break between my doctor degree and my, my engagement as member of the constitution. And of course, I was six years in Germany where the people make law and the law, what, what the law say, you have to respect. And I say my, the, the people that work with me, another people, member of their constitution, why we will do, why we will write that in this constitution? We never will implement that. Don't worry about it. You can't write, we don't, <laughs> I don't care of that. But that's, that is not only the problem in Paraguay. That is all over in Latin America. Today, I was with a lady from Colombia, and the Constitution in Colombia say the children have the right to love, to be loved. Of course, they have the right. How do you implement that? How the government come forth that the father or the mother love their guy? It's impossible. We write in the Constitution things that never happen. The, the Constitution said in Latin America, we have to supply job. Everyone has the right to have a job. And how? We never implement that. 
We never. Uh, the, the Constitution say that uh, everyone has the right to to get the education, but never happened. I think we have to make constitution because the gap, what happens when we have the gap? That the people, the democracy, are losing credibility. The institutions are losing credibility. No one tries to say, okay, that is only words. That is the problem. That is why when the people misrespect the constitution, People don't say nothing. It's okay. I'm going to do two more because we are running out of time. The last two. Um, how does social security in your country compares to our system of social security? No, Here. in America it's if private. It is. In America, I think it's private. We have the public, uh, the three-part uh, uh, social system, the old social system. Uh, we don't change us. Nothing. We have the old-fashioned. Le, uh, German inspiration to say Bismarck, uh, welfare state, just, it means the government pay, the worker pay, and the, uh, the, uh, the, the three parts pay, and you are not free to put your money wherever you want. You, have to, you are forced to be all together. There are three questions that point to the same direction. I want to ask mm -hmm. you this one kind of a summary of a question. As a last question today, I'm sorry there are people that gave me more and I won't be able to cover all. Um, how do you see the collective action of indigenous people in Latin America in relation to the ruler class and the white elite? This is basically three questions. Yeah. Okay. Uh, First of all, in South America, we don't have large Indian majority like in Peru, Bolivian, in Ecuador. Yeah. But uh, the, collect the collective action have free riders in their Indian group because uh, you can see that they are not together in many countries. Now in Ecuador, the large ma majority of the Indian group put in the power President Gutierrez. And now they want to impeach President Gutierrez because they, they say President Gutierrez betray us. But uh, uh, in Bolivia, you have a strong, strong, large majority from Indian group, but they are not all together. They don't recognize only one leader. They don't recognize only one leader. And with the Indian community in many countries, in uh, Andes countries, Bolivia, Peru, Ecuador, uh, never forget that the NGOs play a very important role. The NGOs play a very important role. That's it. Uh, thank you so very much, uh, Carlos Mateo Valmieri. It's a pleasure to have you.